Good morning, dear viewers. Um, this is Bert Goertz. Um, it's a lovely day. It's uh, autumn in Holland, but it's beautiful. The sun is shining. We took a walk this morning, but now it's time to uh, talk about electronics. Um, last tutorial, I finished basically the building of Serenity. But there are still some things that do not work correctly. And um, if you build the apparatus, you will notice that uh, that is normal. It's, there are so many components and so many solar points. You have to uh, tweak a little bit to get it uh, uh, functional and stable. So I made a list of things. Repair the program counter. Um, not this uh, episode. Repair Z and Y ROM. I done that in the last episode. I will start with some RAM ideas and I will explain how I repaired the carry flag. Uh, 5 and 6 are um, for next time. There's never enough time in the day to uh, do all you want. First let me show you uh, the RAM. It's uh, quite huge. It is, uh, has um, 8 times 4 is 32 uh, PCBs and they are the same as I use in the uh, A and B register. Um, the control electronics are not finished yet, you see them in the small picture, but in, in two weeks time I think I'll have them done. So 32 boards, 1400 transistors and approximately 10,000 solder points. I tested it uh, elaborately and I found 18 boards having a mistake. That is, uh, that is much or that's little, that's uh, how you see it. But interesting to me was that uh, I made two honest mistakes. I mounted one transistor uh, wrong, the back side was front and, uh, and reverse. On one board I made uh, the LED uh, current re limiting resistor the wrong value, that's also just a mistake. And I had one gate with a defect transistor, probably through overheating. It has to do that I switched to lead-free solder and that's a bit hotter, so maybe I was not careful. But the big point I want to make is I made 14 uh, insufficient solder points. On this slide you see uh, what I did wrong. On the left you see the wrong uh, solder point. It looks okay from the, from the top side, but not from the bottom side. So I really recommend that, uh, and you probably do this already, I'm the beginner, not you, uh, that you uh, have a mount of solder on top. Then you'll notice that if you turn the, the board around, that you see a, a bulk of, a bit of lead there too. Why is this important? So if I made one solder mistake on, uh, 18 solder mistakes on 32 boards, that means that, uh, Half of my boards I have currently on the computer are suspect that they have at least one mistake. So I'm going to check Serenity all over um, to find these faults because they will really haunt me uh, if I don't fi find them. Two questions about ROM. One is uh, how did I do the check? Well, I just put them into the uh, ALU A and ALU B spot on Serenity and loaded from ROM the binary number 01010101 and the other one <laughs> and send it to ALUA and ALUB and then I reversed the two plates and then I had a good uh, view of if all um, bits did, did their thing. I found one uh, bit that wasn't correct, I haven't fixed it yet but I found it uh, when checking the ALU itself. The second thing is, how are we going to control the RAM? For this um, <coughs> I need a, uh, to be able to have a set and an out uh, signal to each and every uh, RAM cell and I need to be able to address via another line which RAM cell I need. So I invented a 4-bit uh, address I decoded that into 16 ROM lines and by ending this specific uh, ROM line with set or out 
uh, I can um, manage to influence them individually. So in total I'm going to need 2 times 16 AND gates and since I have a board with a combination of NAND NOT gates I'm going to use uh, now well 32 is 4 boards of them. I uh, need to solder them still. To control the ROM we need a uh, 4 to 16 line decoder. And the way I approach this is the same as in the program counter where we broke down a 6 bit wide code. Now it's 4 bit wide but we are going to use a 2 to 4 line decoder with reversed inputs. Put the inputs in a matrix and have a NOR gate there so that only one value out of the 16 will be lit. I made a slide of it, so you see two 4 to 2 line decoders with inverted output, and the output is uh, 1, 0 and 3 once, and they uh, jump from the first place to the second place to the third place to the fourth place. Then you get a 4 by 4 matrix, and every cell is a NOR gate. The only cell where 0 and 0 comes together, the NOR gate will output a 1. Here's the last slide on this subject. I made an example. A0 and A1 are both zeros. A2 is 0, A3 is 1. Then you see the outputs. The one is uh, 0, 1, 1, 1 and the other one is 1, 0, 1, 1. Then you see the matrix. Imagine that in either each, each cell of the matrix is an OR gate. They're all 0 except where the two zeros from the output meet. I'm going to play this clip twice because it's going too fast. In the lower half of the screen you see two rows of eight, four LEDs on and one behind it. That is the carry flag. It is on because the ALU is completely full. Now you see on the background that the uh, values are entered into the ALU. Start again in the ALU and uh, the sum is higher than 256. That Then you see first the uh, uh, carry flag go out because he's thinking and then you see it go on because he realizes there is a carry bit. I hope you can follow this. When I was working on the carry flag I realized that one bit in my ALU didn't work as it was supposed to. Then I started to measure and I realized that I never showed you the instruments I use. I found the bit by the way. <laughs> uh, first one on the left is a board which has uh, just 8 LEDs and current resistors, current re limiting resistors. So I can put it on the bus or on an input. I have another wire up there uh, to the top left, blue, which is the ground and I can, uh, yeah, place it anywhere and I see what the value of the 8 bits are. Sometimes, especially when working with ALU, you want to set all the values to 0 or to 1. Then on the right I have a uh, parallel uh, resistor board which can uh, influence 8 pins to be 0 or to be 1. The last one is a bit more complicated because I uh, it's a very old uh, machine and I changed it uh, a bit. But what's important is that there are 8 LEDs which you can uh, uh, control by switches. You can either put them high, then that channel is high, or you can put them low, then the LED is out and the channel is, is out. Uh, on the top left you see uh, plus and minus for power. Um, very handy tools. Uh, when I come around to it I make a nice board of it. but. Uh, uh, why uh, continue when something works. Well, this is this for this video. First of all, uh, my program counter quirk is still there. Uh, it's not going anywhere until I attack it, but uh, maybe next time. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you are willing, do the following experiments. Take a Gerber file from the Google Drive uh, ask for a quote but at JLC PCB and play around with the shipping costs because there's really a low shipping cost option 
and see how cheap it really is. It's uh, really amazing. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Goodbye, and see you next time.